introduce yet would be Corinth, who is uh, on tracker today. So we're not going to hear much from him, maybe at the very end of the race, but uh, he's here with us, only he's muted and deafened. Absolutely. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is you start off in a store um, in Lost Worlds, and that is actually Melchior's shop in a normal run that uh, gives you access to a couple guaranteed items and some mid-range weapons for everybody, which definitely helps with this run. That's right. It's important to get your revives and shelters there because you may not find them for the rest of the run, and I'm not joking. Wow, a tab invest is available at a uh, Eris or a uh, Trandome. That's that's really nice. If they yeah, that could definitely be helpful. So, what do you think of this starting party? It's gonna be a little slow. Like both care both of these start at uh, speed eight, obviously. Uh, but let's see what they have for tech. So, area bomb, heal beam, Uzi punch. That's just a great spread right there. That yeah, should be no problem. And you can see that um, Chaco is heading into grind right away, while Future is getting a third character, who, which happens to be Frog. He probably doesn't need Frog right now, because Pro he, he has great healers in his party, and uh, there is no way to like find the Mass Immune or Hero Metal, for example. And those are the only ways to get Frog. <laughs> Um, yeah, to get him to a, a place where you would actually use him. Sure, and he's he's great for his heal, but uh, oh, it looks like Future has maybe accidentally gotten into this fight here. Uh, well, and Frog lo is looking a little blue about it. <laughs> There's some bugginess in the rooms where you collect your third character, so. God willing, he's not going to soft lock here, but he might soft lock. Yeah, I have definitely uh, soft locked. No, nope, he's good. Wow, that's great. <laughs> that made me very nervous to watch. Oh, for sure. It's just one of those funny things that is very difficult to like fix in terms of the game because there's so much to do with uh, the way they originally coded this game. And events where you collect characters are really tricky to deal with. And we've like everyone in the community sort of just learned to be careful in rooms like that. So, yeah, that one I've definitely soft locked in races in that room. Um, and yep, it, there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake of using the Inertron. Oh, we see Chaco coming up on this pretty difficult skip that you're kind of a wizard of this skip a little bit. I do know I've... exactly how to do it, and I'm curious to see how Chaco handles it. Unless he's... No, he is lining it up for the skip. Yep. And he makes it. That's great. That's It's a one-pixel uh, window that you have there to squeeze through. <laughs> Cambo makes a good point. Uh, most of these older RPGs are held together with spit tape and dreams. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> especially a game as big as this for its time hey absolutely and they so really see... tried to pa pack as much as they could onto one cartridge so it's interesting that uh, Chaco went immediately here to get his uh, party recruitment because this can be a pretty challenging uh, dungeon if you can't if you aren't able to run from each fight Oh, and he gets the uh, the second skip on Dactyl Nest as well. That's nice. And gets Magus. Yeah, so, rewarded with a pretty good party member. I tend to check Dactyl first as well, just when I run it. I don't, you know, I know it is quicker at Protodome, but uh, the, the we're probably going to watch them go into Reptite Lair pretty soon here to grind out some levels and uh, maybe fight Nisbel. So... I just tend to keep it in the past until I have to leave. Personally. So if you so you you have played quite a bit of Lost Worlds, who would your dream team be if you could choose a starting party? 
a starting party would it would have to ha you know it almost doesn't matter who the characters are as much as it does the tech you start with so say i started with like frog and marl they're not very strong um and they're not very fast but if say frog and marl both have ice two and water two i'm going to be very happy with that because it's it, it it's going to speed up the grinding process which you can now see Chaco is grinding these evil weevils. Um, usually you do that for not, it doesn't take too long. A few minutes, five minutes, for however long you feel you need. Uh, and then you can keep progressing after that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm always interested to hear uh, things you can do or what characters people think are best for different types of runs or different situations. And Lost Worlds is just such an interesting animal when it comes to this. Yeah, I mean, generally, as long as you can grind quick, like Chaco's doing right now, uh, you're going to start learning your other tech pretty quickly too. So it's actually, it's kind of a gamble every time. Because you can never see past, you know, your next tech. So if you get a good party together, uh, you might end up having your, like some of your most choice techs uh, learned very last. So it's always a gamble. All right, Chaco walking into the Reptite Lair, getting started on some probably some early grinding here, hoping to get a good spell that'll help with that. Yeah, I imagine Chaco is very happy with the team he has right now. Uh, he's going to have heavy physical damage from Robo. Uh, healing from Marl, and Marl, Robo have Aura Beam as a dual tech. Um, and then, of course, Magus has his strong magic attacks. Um, he could get, you know, I thought he was a little behind at first because Future went to Protodome and got Frog. But now Future is kind of getting a little caught up on Dactyl Nest, and he's going to lose a bit of time. And it'll be interesting to see what team he chooses uh, once he gets his fourth character. I don't think Chaco's going to go for a fourth character at this point. Um, and of course, you can only have four characters in the Lost World seed, because the rest of them are, are locked in 600 and 1,000 AD. Sure. So a lot of times you just kind of have to go with what you're given. Otherwise, you could potentially lose a good amount of time. Yes. Um, although there is kind of a fail safe uh, that we'll, we might talk about later if it happens. But if you do get to the very end and say, if you fight the Lavos shell um, or Zeal 2, um, it will actually unlock those time periods for you so that if you're truly underleveled, undergeared, and you have to face Lavos, you can then, only at that point, um, go to 600, 1000 and start uh, looting and, you know, there's a lot of tabs in 600 and 1000 and there aren't very many tabs in Lost Worlds in general. So you're only going to find one or two speed tabs maybe in your whole run. So, you, yeah, like you said, what you're given at the start is kind of, you have to deal with it in a lot of ways. Is that also some of the fun of the run compared to a normal race uh, category? It is. It's fun. It is because it's, you know, it's simpler, but it in some ways is a little more of a gamble. It's a little more random. You have a little less control. Um, Taco Hero is asking, is the Z flag off? No, the Z flag is on. So should the runners take the Black Omen route, which of course requires the trigger and clone, uh, they will never have access to 600 and 1000 because as soon as they beat Zeal 2, that's the end. They beat the game. Uh, if they, however, choose to go through the Ocean Palace um, and fight the Shell, after that Shell fight, they will have access to those time periods, but Again, it's only in extreme cases when you're when you've gotten screwed, basically. Yeah, by I, I had to do that in one of uh, my second run ever of Lost Worlds. 
uh, mainly because I ran out of medicine and no stores had good medicine for sale. So I couldn't get yeah. mid tonics, revives, That's anything. One. That's a big one. If you get bad vendors, then yeah, that's the only thing you can do at the end to try and get good vendors. Not having ethers or mid tonics is just brutal. Shelters, you could run out and not find them. And those are very, very useful. So we have different but similar teams going on here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We've got Marley, the uh, the healer with water magic, on uh, Chaco's team, along with Robo and Magus. And then on Future, we have uh, Frog in that same position as healer and uh, water element. So that, that'll be interesting to see which one works out a little better. Corinth is <laughs> saying in chat that there is a store with mid-ethers and full tonics. Not sure where that store is, but maybe he could illuminate us if he's actually listening. <laughs> and um, yeah, the the age old question of Marl or Marley. <laughs> Marl or Marley. <laughs> I think like in Japan, it's like Maru, kind of is how they pronounce it. So. Oh really? I'll I didn't on, know that. I'll stay on the fence with that. Well, yeah, it's but I think it's they're trying to say Marl. Uh, but it ends up sounding like, you know, Marl. But it's not Marley. It's never Marley. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> Damn it. I tried to stay on the fence and there I exposed myself. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, we're, uh. Yeah. They're, you know, it's tightening up again. I'm. This is a great race so far. Yeah, it is. Well, they're in the same dungeon, and there's not that big of a gap. That's right. You uh, never go full Marley. Never go full Marley. <laughs> uh, future uh, going for that chest. That can be a pretty tight chest grab if you don't want this fight, but it's usually a pretty quick fight anyway, so... Yeah, if you can take it down in one turn, it can be good to take the fight because uh, it's, again, in Lost Worlds, like we were saying, uh, vendors can not be so good. So you're going to be relying a lot on drops. Um, so you might want to be killing random enemies you normally wouldn't fight just to see what they drop, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I hate these uh, winged monkeys in Reptite. They can be really mean for no reason. Pretty much anywhere I, in the game you find them, they can they can uh, take out party members. One of my least favorite encounters, for sure. <laughs> that They are a big part of the reason I avoid Dactyl Nest, unless I absolutely have to. Because uh, they make some of those fights tough. Yeah. And they're, they're pretty fast, too, so, like, unless you have 13-plus speed on a character, you're not going to be able to run away from their initial attack, and you can get clobbered really quick. Absolutely. Oh, tried to put something in the chat, and I did it wrong. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Thanks for fixing that, Corinth. I see we have Tekkenu in the chat, which is really nice to see. He was he was involved last year. Um, he made a tracker for this, uh, actually, that I used for many, many months. And sometimes I like switching back to it. But oh, yeah. A good job on that. It's just a simple web-based tracker. And, um, of course, when That's I found nice. out about emo tracker and the auto-tracking capabilities, I, I became lazy. No, I can understand that. The the emo tracker is pretty useful. But I could see the benefit to a web-based one for casual runners, too. Tekka News tracker is nice um, because you it actually shows time periods that you've unlocked, which is something emo tracker does not show. So it does have something unique to offer. And you can find yeah. it in the uh, JOT Discord, which I will try and advertise in chat right now. 
All right, we have our first, or we have the key item that Chaco got was the uh, time egg or chrono trigger. Uh, that is half of one of the go modes. So it you is, see him. You, you can see. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, he's he's running <laughs> right into Sun Palace because if he takes this down, that's a very quick second check, and he could be in go mode in 15 minutes here. Yeah, that would be or crazy. 16. With such a defensive team, too. I don't know. Is that would that be a good thing or a bad thing for this team with their current text? Do you think? I think that he could put Robo in the middle and use Area Bomb, like on the mutants. Uh, I That's mean, if true. he goes, if he uses Trigger and Clone to go through the Black Omen, he basically and everyone who does this will need strong magic attacks to fight the mutants. Um, oh yeah, mutants can be really for. tough. Uh, mutants can be tough, and then Lavo spawn in the same dungeon, the Black Omen. Uh, it's tough yeah. in a different way, and for that one, you need just really strong single tech, single exactly. damage tech. The, the game trolls you with that, don't they? Because you need powerful magic AoE, and then suddenly you need strong, like, single target. And if you have a team like Marl and Luca and whoever else, like, you're going to struggle against that uh, spawn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, help, uh, luckily, Magus will take care of some of that because he does bring uh, nothing but strong AoE. And then Robo, is he gets a strong AoE if you, if you get uh, lucky enough to unlock Shock. Um, but otherwise, even like Uzi Punch or Robo Tackle can be incredibly useful for single target. Incredibly useful. And if they find a good uh, good fist for him, <laughs> that's going to come in really handy. All right, there goes Nizbul is down for future now. So he's going to be finding that same item. I wonder if we're going to see a similar decision made or if he will <laughs> choose to go a different route. Frog went bong. <laughs> so what would be the check you would do next if you were you in know, Future's spot? I would probably do what Chaco did. I would probably go for the next quickest thing. Uh, oh, I hadn't seen exciting. that. Uh, Future going to that house for the free heal. Yep, that's part of um, when you grind at Reptite Layer, as long as I do sometimes, in my hard <laughs> mode boss scaling seeds, where it requires like 20 minutes of grinding at the very beginning. Oh, that's, Chaco uh, just finished off Son of Sun. Oh, Go good. ahead. Good, good. Yeah, that's where you, you rely on that during those uh, sequences. Oh, I so bet. So it looks like, yeah, Future is level 20 now, which is, oh, and Robo's 21. That's good. So you see how quickly you're you're basically at a end game or beginning to end game uh, level. Like you never want to go into Tyranno or um, Death Peak. Uh, you know, any lower than eighteen, pretty much, unless you really want to punish yourself. Oh, and so <laughs> Ch Chaco got the Dreamstone. So well, that split the seed it, now is it is, it and we see future. Way. Making the same choice. I'm going to go see what's behind Son of Sun. It's a quick <laughs> check if you're able to beat it. And he's going to be rewarded with the same key item, that Dreamstone. And I don't know how he's going to feel about that. <laughs> I don't think yeah, that's the stone they were dreaming of. If they get Pendant as a third, it's going to be even more frustrating. Because <laughs> you, you, at that point, you really don't get a choice. Like the the next one they find will determine the path they take. But they yeah. might right now be feeling okay. Like it's, a lot of people don't like doing Black Omen because it's it's a bit long. It has very difficult bosses. So if they find the the clone, they may actually try another check to try and find the Ruby Knife. So we'll see what they do. Yeah, that'll be interesting because in a 
in a solo race, I would all or like in a solo run, I would almost certainly check another, do another check to see if I get Ruby Knife. But in a race, do you just assume that you need to get going? Or do you assume that they're going to take that route and that maybe you can make up some time? I think it'll be really interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a different dynamic when you, uh, you know, you're not talking to chat. You're just focusing on blindly racing somebody whose screen you can't see. And uh, it, it makes your brain work in a different way than it normally doesn't just playing through a scene. Absolutely. That's why it, I always get very excited to watch these runners race. Yeah, well, you never know what choice they're going to make with the info they're given. And uh, you don't know what's going through their mind because the whole race, you've got to be thinking about what that other guy is doing. And what, well, well where did they go first? Because if they went a different place than me, uh, then maybe I need to... Go check that out. Maybe they found that yep. one thing we're both waiting on. Yep, and there are so many different things you can do that you could just guess all day uh, what your opponent has done. Absolutely. There goes Son of Sun for future. He's gonna go find that stone. Omni Liquid asks, is there a reason neither runner gave Magus a red vest? Yeah, maybe. Um, there is actually no reason for that. If they could have bought them, that's something I personally would have done is put a red vest on everyone for mm -hmm. that fight. Um, if you had the money for it, of course. If I had the money for it. Sometimes you can cast barrier as well to deal with Son of Sun's flare, which is frankly the worst attack. So future, <laughs> or magic future wall. Yeah, magic wall. Yep. Future realizing that his seat is split. So it looks like Chaco's doing Aerostome. That's definitely where I would have gone next if yes. I were in those <laughs> shoes. The other two checks after this are uh, Mount Woe and Genodome, and they're both long, obviously. They take a while, and they're kind of high-level areas, so mm -hmm. they tend to go last. Oh, and Mountain of Woe... Uh, it is also a source of a lot of uh, tech points if you don't run from everything. So is that something that you take advantage of in a lot of Lost Worlds runs? Or if you, or is it a last resort for you? I have done seeds where I've checked Mount Wall early based on my tech and my speed. So like, if I have Luca, and she has like dash ring for some wild reason <laughs> and a couple speed tabs and flare then you can really just nuke your way through that place pretty damn quick. Um, so it really depends. Sometimes you can check it last, and just because of the techs and the team you've been given, Mount Woe is just really tough. It's, oh, it can always be tough. Yeah, I've, I've gotten to hate, or I've come to hate Mount Woe a lot less. But there we have it. You see what the Eris reward was? Looks like Chaco has the clone and we'll see what his next step is. Yep, he's going straight to Death Peak. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so he's excited. Looks like there's a skip in his step. It does. It absolutely does. <laughs> <laughs> And this is, I mean, this is 24 minutes in. A 24 minute go mode. Sounds yeah, pretty level, appetizing. You know, the level some of these racers play at sometimes, like you can do the entire Death Peak and Omen sequence in 40 to 45 minutes. So we'll see how uh, short this race lasts. Now, what's the future? Well, it's not obvious. Future may opt to not go black only. We'll see. Sorry, what was that? Uh... Oh, I was going to ask. Uh, so, what is the best known time for a Lost World run on like the modern uh, uh, version of the rando? Do we know? I probably know because I probably have it. <laughs> 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 
I, th I believe it's one hour and eight minutes. Wow. Um, I generally, when I do play Lost Worlds now, I either play it on the hardest possi possible settings for fun, or actually gr I'm trying to grind out a sub one, but it's going to require a truly beneficial roll of the dice in terms of characters and tech, etc. So sure. Absolutely. I, think, I believe it is I believe it's possible. I I believe that you'll probably get it. Uh now we see Chaco going to the dome here to get his character recruitment. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't as pleased with uh his current team for he's Black also, Omen. He's also fighting the buggers first. I guess he doesn't want to see a blue frog. <laughs> no one wants to see a blue frog. <laughs> All right. And looks like Chaco's going to do maybe do some grinding or another check. Oh, he's going to Oh, oh maybe he, some shopping. He's going to shop. Yeah. <laughs> interesting I wonder I, I'm really curious to see what Future's gonna do when he gets his uh, clone in just a second um, Takanu in, in chat says I haven't hit the sub 2 club yet if you play Lost Worlds you're probably gonna be in the sub 2 club just by playing Lost Worlds um, it's quick and it's fun and I like playing quick seeds because sometimes you can fit a couple in in one day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mostly play uh, regular. I've done a few Lost Worlds runs. Uh, I plan on doing some more of them. I ended up right at a sub, sub three on it. Um, but it was the first sub three I had ever gotten, so I felt pretty good about that. Oh, Beanie in the chat. Uh, Beanie Weenie played his first Lost World seed today and he got a 205. So nice. that was a yeah, pretty I fun saw, run. I watched a little bit of, um, I think it was Beanie and the Corn had a race the other day. And uh, that was a really fun thing to watch because they took such different routes. It was. Oh, I think totally that was me and, me and Beanie actually. Oh, sorry, was it C sorry, Cthulhu and Beanie? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's I saw. So many, I saw. There's so many people in the community now. I'm getting people mixed up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but that was <laughs> that was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, that one was interesting because we immediately had access to pendant, and we went completely opposite ways with that info. Totally opposite. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that seed Future was rough. Coming up yep. on the clone. is i think we're gonna see a, a similar skip to his step but i think he's not gonna dilly dally i think he's gonna go not not that that's right. the right decision but i think he's gonna go straight for death peak yeah we'll see Chaco is uh, proving me wrong because i said i think there's two speed tabs in uh, lost worlds there might be three if you do everything Chaco's doing okay Man, that's pretty starved for speed tabs, though. Actually, yeah, the third one's in Geno Dome. So oh, I think Chaco maybe this is speed. the guaranteed full tonic and mid ether shop. Oh, and he found Prism Specs up at the shop. That's huge. Yeah, it is. But, but maybe he can't afford it, and he's just walking away from them. <laughs> oh, so sad. <laughs> yeah, he is that's another thing with lost worlds your gold is is not good um, it's just you haven't been playing for an hour and a half or two yeah. hours before you check that vendor so well you know, and you're not getting like 10k you're also not getting the random drops from as many enemies and so you're going to be more gear yeah. starved and not have as yeah. much to sell to make that yeah. money <laughs> Moon Blizzard says loot forest maze. It's good <laughs> advice for some upcoming uh, 
changes to the randomizer that I think people are going to really enjoy, but it might be too early to talk about. Oh, Chaco is ascending the peak. I'm really curious if Future's going to go straight to the peak after this. Oh, he's checking his text to find out. <laughs> now, is I this... Think... Oh, he might... go ahead. He may make his decision differently based only on the fact he has a slightly different team. Frog mm -hmm. makes you feel safe because he will make you safe. So we'll see what it does here. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Safety save just in case. Chaco navigating through Death Peak pretty well so far. Some of these skips are more difficult than they seem like they would be. Oh, and a Valkyrie. Wow. Rewarded with a nice bow. Something future will pick up and think, I have no use for that. Exactly. Oh, and they both grabbed the power tab on, on the mountain. What do you think of this dungeon, uh, both in vanilla and in Jets? Well, in vanilla, I think there's like two or three extra spawn fights you have to do. <laughs> there are. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, here's my other thought on vanilla. I have fond memories of grinding to level star star on the, the, the crackers. I think that might be in vanilla one of the best places to grind. Really? That's not one I've heard discussed very often. I, well, it was a long time ago. I could totally be wrong. But where Chaco is right now, it, you can gather six onto the screen, you'll get 2,000 experience uh, in vanilla. I don't know what you get in the randomizer, which is what we are here to talk about today. So For Sure. <laughs> Uh, but again, it can be a good place to uh, grind. I, actually, I always try to hit it once uh, when I walk through. And about now I'm starting to think, you know, I'm going to have to do single target attacks on the spawn. And, um, well, they're both in the same boat, really. Whether they switch Marl for Frog or Frog for Marl, it doesn't matter. Robo's actually going to be their big damage dealer here. Yeah, and I Chaco don't know if you noticed... might have an edge because of that Valkyrie, though. Yeah, that could make a difference. Uh, Corinth bringing up a good point that Mar Marl or Marley uh, won't auto-attack oh, auto attack much, but it could be useful in some of these fights. Yeah, And then I we mean... see uh, the Crackers, I believe, are dropping Lapises. And so Future has decided to fight everyone he sees, and I don't blame him. Yeah, that could make a huge difference in the end. And He's there's one at of his uh, healing tech. He's thinking, do I need lapises or do I have good enough healing with my tech? Chaco's and... now uh, facing the spawn. Yeah, that dreaded spawn we've already mentioned once. Such a good guy. He'd really do anything for you if you asked him. Yeah, it's... Valka already paying off. Um, I was going to say that this is one reason that you might want to, even though Frog's going to basically keep your party safe, like better than anyone else can, uh, Marl has haste, and Chaco's been putting that to good use. Yeah, he has. And They're going faster hit in the a shell. speed run is never, a ro <laughs> is never a bad thing, so... No. Unfortunately, he nicked that shell there, and uh, that cost him some yeah. health. Nicked the shell. I like that. Nicked the sh he nicked the <laughs> shell. He was trying to hit it in the face, but sometimes you just nick that <laughs> shell. Man, I would love a seed with this many lapises uh, available to the player. That's pretty great. Yeah, lapises are one of the best uh, consumables, easily. 
Oh yeah, they're just so useful. I mean, it's it's three mid tonics in one click, like one turn. It's pretty darn convenient. Yeah, and they're pretty plentiful, so if you want to use a whole turn, you can heal everyone for 600. And it's something I end up doing quite often. Oh yeah. Well, especially on the mode you play, where uh, it's the difficulty set so much higher for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there is no real reason. <laughs> Man, these are... For having two of the same characters, these are very different teams. Choco I think they're going to play a lot better. Fight look pretty easy. And also got a speed tab. Very nice. And like you said, those are so much more valuable in this run. Corinth is pointing out that Labus is more powerful than Robo's heal beam. I'll say this. You can make Robo's heal beam better just by giving him magic tabs. Um, it's going to up his healing capabilities more than you know it might be more useful than feeding them to any caster because you give it to a caster each tab's only going to give their attack like an extra like 25 or 50 damage or something it's really not that much mm -hmm. for each tab it's not like by time extra... you get to end game by the time you're at end game having an extra one or two hundred damage it's not going to make a huge difference Having an extra one or two hundred health or healing, that does make a difference, though. Is that what you're saying? Basically, yep. Yeah, that was one of the great pieces of information I was given very early on into learning this run. Yeah, I never knew that magic tabs would actually improve Robo's healing or anyone's healing. But once I learned that, I started using it a lot more. Yeah, they're great on Robo. Great on frog. Just a lot of a lot of cool things you can do with that. I almost always try to. I almost always have a healer in my team, um, and I almost always try to get give all my tabs to them. So it's important. It's so important. Um, you know, you could learn that the hard way, especially in Lost Worlds, if you don't get a healer at all. And, uh, and then you're relying purely on consumable items, which can get very difficult to manage. Kind of looks like Future Force may not be aware of the save point that's right there. He walked right past it, but he must be confident enough <laughs> to, to beat Shell, so, or the spawn. Yeah. So we'll, see. well, he does have Leap Slash Frog. Which, while Leap Slash is not the best of the single target attacks, it's the best one Frog has. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't catch what sword he has for Frog, but... So yeah, that could make a big difference. Damage. He'll be fine, I'm sure. Be totally fine here. The biggest thing is just knowing what not to do, <laughs> which is attack the shell. Absolutely. <laughs> and Choco is going item hunting. I think. It took a little while there to get into the omen. I, I, I was actually watching future screen. Yeah. So there's, right now, we're one boss fight. They're one boss fight away from each other. And there's a lot of boss fights. So since we, since it appears both of them are going to go through the omen, let's talk about um, what what does the omen consist of for these runners? Because like you said, they're going in pretty low level, but I think the omen is pretty useful for that. Yeah, there's not there's a couple places to do a grind. But there's a huge variety of monsters to fight in here. So when I play, I tend to just fight as much as I can. I, I don't run from very many encounters, actually, when I'm in here. Because, yeah, usually I am a bit of a low level. So 
I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Choco plays it. Um, uh, one of the big differences in here that can make or break your team is whether you're able to take down those uh, flying eyeballs, which probably everyone remembers. Um, they award a lot of experience and tech points and can be very difficult to hit if you don't have the right party. Uh, Mara and Luca, they're very good at hitting those eyeballs. Magus too, but I think technically it's about a 50-50 uh, for any character. So, yeah, Moon Blizzard. Moon Blizzard bringing up a good point. I didn't realize this about Lost Worlds either, that the omen is open in the future. Yes. And it correct me if I'm wrong, but in vanilla, the omen also shows up in 12,000. Does it not? I believe so, yeah. So when I first played Lost Worlds, I got very confused trying to find out where to access the Black Omen. Um, it wasn't showing up in 12,000, and obviously you don't have access to 600 or 1,000. So yeah, in a Lost Worlds, you have to access it in the future, which normally you can never do. Always locked. Uh, but in Lost Worlds, that's that's how you go in. Now, you also have the benefit of um, zeal not being destroyed in 12,000. Is that correct? Or is it still destroyed in, in Lost Worlds? Unless you... No, it will be if you go as far as the shell fight, correct? Right? Like, whether you win or lose to the Lavos shell... Oh, you're right. You're absolutely that's right. after the after the Golem Twins? Yeah. Yeah. So whether you whether you win or lose to the Lavo Shell, uh, Zeal Kingdom will fall. And okay. Yes. Sorry, I had that backwards in my head for some reason. <laughs> it's things are backwards when we're watching Lost Worlds, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> so most things are backwards, but a few things are the same. We got Chaco coming up on the panel enemies that can be pretty interesting. They can have some good tech point drops. They can have um, good item steals if you're lucky enough to have an Ayla. But neither Absolutely. of these guys are going to have this, unfortunately. I think in vanilla, there are speed tabs that you can steal. That's right. Panels give speed tabs. That's crazy. Um, I didn't... I'll, I'll pick it up uh, sooner or later. I didn't see who... if. Chaco's used those speed tabs yet but speed can be very useful in the Black Omen um, if you don't have 12 or 13 speed you're basically going to get hit first in most fights especially with like the panels anything mm -hmm. involving robots etc oh and the speed helps so much with these uh, watcher and sidekick fights too because they have such high evasion, you just need as many chances at hitting them as you can. Yes, and once you kill the center, the other bits try to run away. So the more hits you can get in, the better. Yeah, because they have pretty big XP drops and pretty big uh, tech point gains. And yes, they I can think it's a, drop I think it's elixirs. A, it's, a thousand, it's a thousand XP and 50 tech points. I think. I think you're Maybe right. it's a thousand and a hundred. Oh, we got someone new in fight. chat will correct me if I'm wrong. He's got new fight on future screen right now. Right, so they're actually kind of taking really similar paths. Um, I guess we were both wrong. Future didn't go straight for Death Peak. Well, oh, he uh, right, Doctor he Tom completed said? Death Peak. He hasn't gone straight for the Omen. Oh, he, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, I, uh, I think they drop different amounts of XP based off how many of them escape. Because I don't think yes. you get any items for the sidekicks, or if the sidekicks both get away. You can get an item drop from the center, but you will never get tech or experience from the center. 
Yeah. And you can get an item drop from both. So you always want to take out the center and then try and take out as many of the uh, little guys as you can. Also, the center is a lot easier to hit. So. Yeah, and oh, I think the center is uh, dropping elixirs right now. Yeah, Valkyrie is going to help a lot here because, as you can see, <laughs> it's doing 600 damage on a critical. Yeah. I didn't even think Which about one? that for the Watchers, but that's great. Yeah, it's going to one-hit any part of that fight. Yeah, we do see them making pretty similar choices here. Future grabbing the speed tabs and uh, things he knows to look for here. That's smart. It's a very smart thing to do, because if you lack speed, not only is it going to take a long time, it's difficult to to fight the end bosses beanie says i bet it smells weird in that room full of news yeah <laughs> <laughs> me and beanie were talking about news earlier uh where they came from what they do what are they <laughs> and i love the I, lore stuff that's included about them like the fact that they think because they fun. were around they were around before lavos hit the earth right so yeah they were that present adds. in prehistory um and i know they like stealing and hiding things because that's why there's magic tabs and power tabs everywhere so they've hidden them i think angrel just summed it up in chat <laughs> it's not even worth discussing yeah all life all begins out to the new <laughs> If, if all the news got together, they could probably stop Lavos for us. Oh, yeah. Imagine an array <laughs> of news that was <laughs> hundreds of square miles. <laughs> they each use like 50 tabs before they head in. <laughs> so even though it appears that Chaco is like flying through Black Omen, he is doing skip after skip after skip after skip. Mm -hmm. You just did a skip that I didn't know I, you could do it that easily. I'd do it a different way, but he skipped maybe seven or eight fights there. And it's just something that takes a bit of practice and also confidence because oh, sometimes I take I take a lot of those fights if I'm... Uh, We've got a haste, haste helm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going on Magus. And a speed belt on Magus. Yeah. Megas has 15 speed for Chaco. That is pretty glorious. Yeah, it is. And of course, this new store here has some guaranteed items as well. Did you want to talk about what you uh, can rely on being here? Sure. Um, there's two vendors in every seed of Jets of Time that have a guaranteed amulet. Um... It's 50,000 gold, so you do have to save up for it if you really want it or if you really need it. But yeah, one place to find it is the Black Omen, and the other place is the New Shop um, up in Zeal there, where uh, Ch Chaco also found those Prism Specs. Of course, Prism Specs are not guaranteed, um, but amulets are simply because Lavos, his chaos zone attack or his obstacle attack um, will inflict you with a random status effect so in vanilla it always casts chaos on you you just get chaos and then you get knocked out of it at, like in the next turn but in the randomizer he can also cast you know poison or like lock or even stop so you enter that fight with no status protection it's possible that he will cast stop on every single one of your teammates. Wow. Sorry, I got to interrupt and, real quick. Chaco just yeah. got that skip. Uh, he got the chest in the room with the uh, black snake enemies. And he got both parts of that skip. He like just ran in there, grabbed the chest, got back out, went through the door without triggering that fight. I have yet to do that yet. <laughs> that takes an incredible amount of... Out of steady hands, I guess. Yeah. 
and it was pretty seamless like how quickly he was able to do that that was very well done but sorry to interrupt oh so yeah so amulets uh guaranteed um because yes lavos can stop your entire team so uh, speaking of amulets future just got that, one from a drop there that's good that's good and if you get too many yeah you can sell them for twenty five thousand each absolutely maybe pick up some prism specs <laughs> oh that ship has sailed they, unfortunately i they probably i think they both visited that shop but neither of them could afford that would be a nice thing to put on magus before you face the mutants yeah it would just to uh reiterate the prism specs are increase all damage output by 50 percent such a big change uh corinth's right they could go out and get them i uh i think chaco is past the point of going back or where i would go back and it looks like future's worried about where corinth or where chaco might be so he's just gonna proceed as planned i have walked out of the omen all the way out it's a long walk <laughs> you don't want to do it. Yeah, you would have to get it. I would for me to leave. I'd have to find it before like the first save point in the Omen for me to go out and do it. But that uh, the walk up to Zeal is just as long. Oh yeah, the new will warp you out. Thank you, Ang. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, last week I did a seed where I walked all the way up. This is pretty amazing to see them both in go mode, in the same dungeon at the same time, and there's just a couple different decisions, and it's going to make these fights completely different for them. As we start getting into is. what I consider the boss rush of Black Omen. Absolutely, and those the, the gap between those decisions is, you know, getting narrower because Future did go and get those speed tabs. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to give Chaco a big edge, but Future responded with some uh, good play there. He did. Well, and uh, some of that could be not knowing where the other player is, you know. Because um, not going to get those tabs may have or obviously would have cut some time off between them but if you don't know where the other person stands next to you yeah. you may decide if you're feeling if you're feeling really good about how you're doing you might do a couple little extra little things you know mm -hmm. and so maybe they both feel really good about it and they should because their time is frankly amazing yeah it's a great time so far and this is Zeal 2 Flag, which for those who don't know, or maybe this is your first run you're watching, um, that will let them, uh, it'll stop time and end the game after Zeal 2 boss, which is at the end of this dungeon. They will not have to fight Lavos. That's right. In, in the, you know, earlier days of this rando, it was created as a, way to balance the fact that Black Omen takes so much longer to complete than Ocean Palace. Um, however, I've heard some very strong arguments from Moon Blizzard and its Taco Hero, for example, that Black Omen could be even faster. So we'll see. Maybe that flag will get taken out entirely thanks to them. I am being sarcastic, by the way. <laughs> I was wondering... <laughs> I I like the ZL2 flag just because like you finish all of this gauntlet and then you get two Lavos or you get two Queen Zeal and you beat her and then you still have to do Lavos and it I don't know it's there's something about it that just doesn't it feels like you've already finished what you set out to do <laughs> I feel like the fact they give you that bad ending credits right after mm -hmm. it's like that's balanced enough 
<laughs> I don't have to feel like I got the true credits, but uh, it do it adds a lot of time if you want to fight Lavos after. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's the Giga Mutant showing up on Chaco's screen here. And, uh, man, he can be mean against certain teams. So you talked about this earlier, wanting strong AoEs for this fight, right? Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna see him probably use Dark Matter. He has Magus Hasted. He's probably just going to use Dark Matter and try to keep everyone healed. Maybe throw in the Odd Ice, too. Um... I was going to say that haste is just going to come in so after, so useful for these fights. Yeah, and it's that's going to be another decision, or one of the few decisions that was wildly different is that third party member. Frog is going to give him consi more consistent uh, full party heals, whereas... Chaco has haste, which can definitely cut down on some of these long boss fights. One of them's a little yeah. safer, and one's a little bit faster, so... As those boss fights go on, you could see a faster boss fighting team get a bit of an edge. Although Future did just take an encounter he didn't need to, so that's gonna put him behind just a little bit. Absolutely. Although he did choose to fight it, so he must have some kind of strategy in mind. Um, well, sometimes I choose to fight that one by uh, missing the skip entirely. So <laughs> that's one of my special strategies oh, I keep secret. That's, you choose it by missing the skip. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, Chaco, fight. Chaco went through Omen, I'd, I'd say, quite a bit faster than maybe I personally would have. Um, so hopefully he's he feels good. He's confident that he's not going to be underpowered or anything like that. Unfortunately, Frog still has his base sword. So he's yeah, I'm that's sure going to have to change. That's going to have to change. Uh, but now, didn't Future pick up Marl? No, uh, he, he did, so he, he must did. have also picked mm -hmm. up that Valkyrie. He has mm -hmm. the choice. He, he has does. Choice. He does, but I think he was deciding to still go with Frog for the heals, and maybe in hopes that he would find something nice sitting in a chest <laughs> along the way. Oh, and here comes Chaco. Yeah. He did a excellent job taking care of that mutant. Yeah, he did. Chaco's been with the community for quite a long time. In fact, uh, well, we're getting close to about a year ago when I watched a race between Chaco Sora and X Ice Blue, and uh, that's I just had I randomly caught it on Randomania one day, and I was like, "There's a Chrono Trigger randomizer," <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where it started. So Chaco's been around for a long time. He's he's got a lot of tips and tricks that he can offer out. In fact, he's one of the most interesting players to watch, in my opinion, because he has some of the most interesting strategies. Yeah. Well, and he, his skips, like, I think I've only seen one runner who makes some of those skips look easier than he has in some of these. Yeah, he's been practicing. I can tell. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I always tell people, I think... Uh, your streams are crazy to watch for skips because you are so consistent at some of those difficult skips and like you barely see the setup on them. I practice a lot on the skips. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a big way to gain an edge in a race is to There we is go. To know Demon every hit. Skip. And we're Demon seeing obviously seeing... our frog boy. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's a great upgrade. <laughs> oh, he's thinking about... He sold an amulet. He was thinking about it. He decided to yeah, sell it. Yeah. He ended up with the demon hit, so... Yeah. 
Bowser's both sort of doing oh, a bit bat of skip. Oh, wow. What a quick bat skip on that. That just goes goes to give more credit to Chaco for for he's definitely yeah, been he, practicing he's these been, routes. He, he's been nailing these skips, and uh, <laughs> that bat skip. I I'll tell you, man. I I used to be good at it, and then one day I just stopped <laughs> being good at it, and I gave up. And now I just take the fight every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm at with uh, the scouter skip in Ocean Palace. There's that scouter yeah. skip to hit those switches. I can get in every time and hit the lever. I cannot leave. <laughs> and so I just uh, continue Dino Tail strats at that point. <laughs> Taco uh, in chat is, of course, referred to the upcoming tournament um now i can't i think i'm matched against one of these racers i think you're matched against chaco if i it's, remember incorrect it's been changing it changes every now and then as people okay. join and uh it might the last time i checked i think Terra i'm on chaco pole. If Chaco wins, I think we're in different brackets on round one, but we could face in round two if we both win. Oh, okay. The, the, when the bracket first was made, it was me versus Taco, and it changed a couple times, and now we're oh. both on totally opposite sides. These eyes are giving Future some hesitation here. They are not wanting to cooperate, and then Chaco... Yeah, he's Fighting, not wanting uh, to fight them. Fighting a grandpa mutant here. <laughs> it kind of is grandpa mutant. <laughs> He's strong, <laughs> but not in the same ways as he used to be. <laughs> exactly. You can tell he has more experience, but it's just not <laughs> as quick. He keeps yelling at the party members to get off his lawn. It's 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 what he's doing. <laughs> That's what he's doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Giga mutant remembers what the agenda is. <laughs> Terra mutant just wants to get out, get out of my space. I always thought he just looked like a weird mop as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> But man, he's a he's an annoying fight. Annoyingly difficult. Cause it's not even yeah, always necessarily strategy. You're just hoping things don't go as bad as they possibly could in those fights. The one thing Terra Mutant can do, I think that Giga can't, is he can affect your status. So he could like put your party out pretty quick. Oh wow, that was a quick battle. Great. Yeah, that was a fantastic fight. Ooh, wonder shot for Luca, of course. <laughs> so the tab invest and wonder shot are available. If they want to do a new game plus after this, but, you know, I don't <laughs> think we have time for that. No. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one of them. Oh well, no, never mind. You don't have the shell, so you, you're we're not going to see. We're not going to see them going back That's true. for That's additional true. shopping. Will, at this point, they will never have access to six hundred and one thousand, just due oh. to the uh, zeal two flag. All right, we're heading into the final run here. Final section for Chaco. But first, Derby Walruses. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I've always seen those things as as a kid. <laughs> just always make me think of Derpy Mutant Walruses. <laughs> oh, there's I'm that Lava gonna... Spawn. Yeah, this Lava Spawn has uh, about 10,000 extra HP. From the last one now, I can't remember if it has ten thousand or about twelve thousand, but it 
has many thousands of HPs. Too it can many also thousands. hit you much hit you much harder. And uh if you accidentally hit the shell, he will actually one-shot you with a very powerful attack that basically is guaranteed to take out anyone that doesn't have, like, say, you know, if you have a safe helm and a gold earring, you might survive it. But... <laughs> I, this, this fight's tough in vanilla, so let alone... Even in the randomizer, this can be a tough fight. And then you tack on that this is Lost Worlds and you're a little gear starved and a lot gold starved. That can probably make this a pretty pretty risky gamble. Have you had runs killed? Like where you were maybe going to PB? Um, um, have you run into issues? A, I don't know about cl anything about a PB like that's ruined a PB or anything like that, but for sure I've had my runs end <laughs> here yes fair enough <laughs> <clears throat> but it, it it does look like Chaco is managing things pretty well he's you know he's got I, his I like healers the, yeah I was gonna say I like that he's not afraid to use those lapises uh, that he has a few of yeah I don't think he has as many as future does in fact, it looks like you may have used the last one there, if I saw that correct. And of course, Future is now fighting Giga Mutant, as we can all see here, and not doing bad at all, so. It's a very <laughs> close race. Um, Zeal 2 is a little more predictable, I'd say, than uh, Lavos, but she has some very powerful spells. Yeah, and a lot of fighting her is uh, making sure you can deal as much damage as you need to before she hits her ultimate water attack and a lot of times that could go a long way towards deciding how that fight's going to go for you I wonder if this team has enough damage quick enough to uh, get through that easily yeah we have seen races in the past where they're close until they have to fight the final boss, and then mm -hmm. you get wiped by the final boss, and you have to retry one, maybe two times. It's happened. Um, we'll see what happens tonight. You know it's got to be on the back of both of their minds. Like, what if I'm not strong enough? What if I don't gain enough XP in this area? What if it I don't be, pull that I... gear I need? I'm sure they're aware of their time and they know how early it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, we're at 108 just now and uh, Chaka was very close to that last fight and that hardest fight. The future's not that far behind him. He's, you know, a couple bosses behind. It wouldn't take a whole lot for, for things to swing. Not at all. Not at all. So, here's an interesting question for you about Lost Worlds. As uh, Lava Spawn drops. Uh, in, in regular jets, there are a couple key items, most notably uh, tools, that when you get them, you sigh... You bow your head a little bit, and then you move on to the next check. It, what's the closest equivalent you have in Lost Worlds? Is it the pendant? It would have to be the pendant just because if you're really trying to get the best time possible, the pendant does nothing but slow you down. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're trying to have like a casual, enjoyable experience and not punish yourself... <laughs> like I do. Um, there there really is no item like that, you know? Like, Because the pendant does unlock so many great things for you. Um, like for like the tools in the, in the regular mode, unless you, uh, unless you really want to upgrade the mass immune and get a couple of chests, it's a complete waste of time. Uh, sure. And it's long fights that you have to go 
back and dangerous forth a couple fights times. Yeah. as well. And that's why we've made categories where those things are required, you know? Um, and there's going to be some changes coming in the future that might make it more desirable. But we'll, Absolutely. we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what people do with it. Um, I used to think that the jerky was the least favorable item, but it can give you such great gear. I get actually legitimately happy now um, when I get jerky at Snail Stop or Carpenter. I'll drop everything at the start of the run and go check it because I've had it be rainbow. I've had it be like vigil hats a couple times it's always, it's always in the god tier it's mm -hmm. always in the god tier and getting and it early could help you make a character decision so i've i've been going yes. out of my way to do that <laughs> yeah and even if you if you get something you're not going to use it's like free gold and it could be worth a lot of gold so so i had something you know, pointed out I'll to me last gold. week uh the mammon machine is the sigil for zeal in this game and okay. as a kid i always thought the symbol on the sealed doors was like a scarab beetle but no it's totally the mammon machine oh on the doors on the yeah, sealed doors sense. sure there's one in the background there well it's like a wall feature Mm-hmm. and on, then uh, somebody else chocolates. pointed out on the wall feature there uh they or, uh, on the doors, they have a dot for each sealed chest that you can get. So there's, Whoa. I think there's 12 dots around it to show how many chests, and I, they may or may not light up. I don't think they light up, but somebody mentioned they may. I need to check that. I'm gonna definitely yeah. check that. That sounds very cool. Megalixer pole. And we are at the Mammon Machine. Yeah, We're really coming Chocolate down. With getting very close to zeal too i think he's probably gonna have no problems at all um future had to take that bat encounter unfortunately but he is well on his way uh to finishing and even if things stay uh, as they are both runners are gonna have absolutely incredible times oh absolutely these are going to be amazing times for both of them. There goes Mammon Machine. So that means we're at our friend now. Time to go out to space and fight a masquerade mask. Yeah, Chaco's time in Black Omen was very short. Uh, that was a very short amount of time. I wasn't actually timing it, but I feel like I should be because yeah. he made such good work of that. Look at it. He's going to have one of the best times in this category after this race, you know? Yeah, I think so. Although anyone who plays this category will have one of the best times because nobody <laughs> played it. <laughs> it's not a terribly common category, but I definitely think there's some things that could happen that could make it more popular. And I think as we get more people in the community... I think there will be a passionate but small fan base for this this exact run. It definitely has some benefits that the others don't. We see the haste going out on everybody just to try to make sure this goes as quickly as possible for Chaco. Were, was Lost Worlds around when you first got into the community? Nope. No. Um, I believe Anski was testing it for a little while, though. Um, and a few of the testers got to play it, so eventually I did, you know, 
I got the opportunity to get into the sort of testing community part of it. And, uh, and then I got to test it a bit and now it's a thing. So that's awesome. I would love to, at some point here, uh, how the idea came to be and how, like the different iterations it went through. I think that'd be really interesting. As we see both of them in boss, we have double bosses going. Same dungeon, double yep. boss. And uh, Chaco, again, is managing things very well. He's healing plenty with his healers. And I don't know if he's going to have any trouble even with Hexagon Mist. We'll see. We'll see if she casts it. I think both runners have a Mega Elixir uh, as well, which is very nifty to use when you get Zeal 2 down to half health. She will hit you with Hellation, uh, which oh. reduces everybody's HP to 1. So if you can follow that up with a Mega Elixir, uh, you're safe. As you're just safe. And, uh, so I believe nice that was the first Hexagon Mist cast. It was, and it almost killed Magus. He has two HP left. Yeah, I did. <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe if you are able to do enough damage quickly enough um, in this boss, you can skip that first Halation and you, or skip that first uh, attack and get hit with the Halation instead. Oh, maybe. Yeah, if you can get to 10k damage before Hexagon Mist, she will skip it and hit with the uh, Halation the instead. Here. Oh, just hit with Halation. Over yeah, she'll over. skip it entirely and go to Halation, or, okay. and then the MP Buster that she does. So that can be a lifesaver on some of these runs. I did not know that. See, Future we, Force coming up learn. on this one. Yeah, there's plenty to learn. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So here comes yeah, that and, first Halation. If you can put out that much damage, uh, you can probably kill her before that anyways. Good Looks point. like he's going to be a little safe there. Just do some healing without the, the Mega. But yeah, at this point, it's just trying to get down as much damage as you can. As we see Future head uh, back into that Lava spawn fight. And oh, and we do see some shields. Out. Laying some shields down. Just to try to make it a little bit easier here. It's a very smart thing to do. Shields and barriers are absolutely your friend in this randomizer. It's something you don't use much, you know, in casual play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost play never. Every... Almost never. See the ice tackle coming out. I love some of Robo's dual techs. He doesn't have a lot of them. They're all pretty fun to watch. I'm a big, big uh, Robbie fan, which is what I call Robo. Yeah, Robbie, yeah. <laughs> well, I just figure his name's the R-66Y, and I think that converts right into Robbie, not Robo. I'd like to believe, you know, they watched <laughs> those and that they based a little bit of a story around that. Absolutely. So, I, he will always be Robbie in my heart. Robbie <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> Solid damage getting thrown down. And here comes Hexagon Mist 2. Probably not going to get a third one. So we're going to need to be ready on time. Yep. 
again, Chaco is just managing things so well with his healing and his damage output. He's even, even though he's using Robo and Marl to heal, he's also getting ice tackles off. So. Oh yeah, those haste he's having, are so he's beneficial. Having no trouble. Oh, here comes Dark Gear Shadow. And there goes the Lava Spawn on Future's side. Excellent. Yeah, I know we tend to focus on who's in the lead when we're commentating, but Future has been doing just as good of a job. He, you know, took a few different corners, you know, during play, but really his all of his boss fights have been good. He hasn't been struggling. He never died. Um, both of our runners here today are, are just doing such an excellent job. Yeah, and, uh, and another thing that you kind of discussed a little bit, too. Uh, oh, as ZL2 goes down, and that is time for Chaco. It's a wonderful time. Or 121. Yeah. We'll call it 121. I hope Chaco keeps playing Lost Worlds so that uh, I'll have someone to race now. Yeah, absolutely. That's an amazing time. That's um, the kind of time I like to see. Sorry, I interrupted myself because, of course, the end came. Uh, I was going to say, uh, somebody like Future standing up that, this well in this race when he hasn't been here nearly as long as Chaco. Um, and this is a relatively new category for him. So He's now at Zeal 1. He's beginning yeah. this fight now. It's so close. And yeah, where did Future come from? If I do, Does anyone know? Because he showed up like a couple months ago and he just yeah. had all these connections. And he came from Final Fantasy VI Rando. <laughs> He's um, developing jets now for like helping develop the new patch. He's put so much work into this community in the last couple of months. Uh, huh, this is the reason why we're here right now. So, well, let's get uh, Chaco in here. Yeah. And uh, we can go over some stuff with him. I'm going to lower the audio, the game audio, just a hair here. so I think that'll be good yeah he he's he does a lot of different RPGs and things future has been a great addition to the community I think a lot of the additions we've gotten in the last couple months have been great additions um, to the community it's just great to have new people coming in uh, new people getting other or running different categories getting everyone kind of helping each other get started it's just such a and I welcoming just, i just want i just want to quickly point out that future uh just executed that menu glitch uh which you can do right right after you kill zeal one you have a short little window where you can hit x and open the menu up and it, you can fully heal and get ready for the rest of the battle so uh choco congratulations on your amazing time Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so how did you feel during that whole run? Because you looked pretty confident in a lot of your skips. Um, well, for one thing, I, this is the first Lost World seed I played in probably about two months. And I, see, before then, I, I practiced Lost Worlds a little bit, so I, I tried to practice all the skips, or well, most of them anyway. Um, I'm actually surprised I got that skip at Dactyl Nest the first try because I usually can't get it on a normal run. Oh yeah, that was a great skip. Like the the most impressive thing to me was uh Black Omen. Like oh, that was a fast Black Omen. Oh, I agree. That that was that was it was pretty tense too at certain points like against a Giga Mutant. Um I had to make sure I had um Magus constantly attacking and and uh, Marl and Robo supporting 
Um, and seeds, I'll be honest, seeds like this are are why I love using Marl because she's so good at her role. I mean, she may not do a lot of damage like other characters, but she definitely gets the job done. And I'm really, really glad I found that Valkyrie because I that, that, I, Valkyrie was. that I did some work a little bit. Yeah, it did. Right time for the spawn fight. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask if there was any possible chance you ever would have considered swapping because you did go and you did find Frog. So would you have considered using him for any reason over any of your party members? Uh, not really. I, I mainly went in there just to see who was there because if it was, say, a Luca, then I probably would have taken her. But I saw the Frog and I'm thinking... Eh, I, I think I'll be okay without him because I have Heal Beam and Marl, so I shouldn't need Frog at all. Uh, plus, I didn't have anything for him anyway, so uh, that's why right. I just... I as, as, as we were watching the early game, um, you and Future actually checked two different places uh, for your third character. Uh, and you both stuck with what you found, so... Oh, yeah, I, oh, did Future do Factory? Or? Yes, he... Well, he didn't... He just went to Protodome. Ah, okay. Oh, um, that's right. Characters aren't locked on. on characters here. are unlocked. Um, totally forgot about that. So, he stuck with Frog, but when he found Marl, he stuck with Frog. So... Yeah, so was ah. there was there any other character besides Luca that would have made you switch if you had seen them there? Hmm... Ayla would have been nice, I guess, but not really. Okay. And Chrono, eh. I didn't, I didn't have any good weapons for Chrono. At least I didn't. I don't think I found anything good for him. Uh, you found a slasher too at some point, but it was pretty late, I think. Oh yeah, slash. Okay, yeah, that wouldn't. Have... No. <laughs> that wouldn't have mattered all that much anyway. <laughs> no, that was a great I, if... run. I guess. Uh... Another question I might have is I noticed that before you went to Death Peak, you did a bit of running around. It seemed to be about gathering speed tabs. Yeah. Um, I knew who I was using and I needed all the speed I could get because I knew I was going into Black Omen. I knew I was, I had to deal with Giga Mutant and Zeo 2 eventually. So I needed all the speed I can get. Um, I, I think putting that one speed tab on Magus might have made a little bit of difference there. I mean, there's also that haste helm I found too, which really helped. Yeah. Um, your your Magus was very high. Wasn't he 15 speed or something? He was very high speed. At the end, I think he was about 13, 14, somewhere in there. Because I think I had Magic, was it Magic Seal or Magic Ring on him or something at uh, the end? Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted his dark matters to do as much damage as possible. Yeah. So uh, thirteen I, I plus I, speed belt is what we were seeing. Uh, oh, was a speed a belt? While. You had speed belt for a little while. Yeah, um, yeah, I did. Yeah. One thing, the whole community kind of pooled together in sadness at this point. How did you feel when you found the prism specs, and there was no way you were going to be able to afford those? <laughs> <laughs> well, if if y'all watching closely, uh, my uh, my commands at the bottom, I was just I was rage uh, tapping A right there. I seen those prison specs. I'm like, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I'm like, please, can't you cut me a I discount I wasn't, just this once? <laughs> yeah, I knew I wasn't going to be able to afford them, no matter how much I sold. So it, it just bought a. I, I kind of cried a little bit right there when I saw it. <laughs> we all so, did. We all did. Yeah, Everyone in chat as well. I was very sad, but <laughs> it happens. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for uh, for being in the race. Uh, and just like we said, great run, really solid. I was nervous about this race when I first started because the party selection you started with was a little rough. Or a little oh, slow. Well, well, well. Yeah, I was... That's the first thing I worried about because um, usually 
I prefer faster characters over slower, excuse me, slower characters on Lost Worlds, but I knew if I found at least a semi-fast character, like a Magus or Kona or Ayla or something like that, then I would have been okay. Thankfully, I got the Magus and... Yeah, especially Black Omen can be rough if you have a low speed. Oh, yeah. I was worried about that, too, because if I had found someone like Ayla going into Black Omen, then it, I would have been very sad because... Go ahead. I knew my best tech against Giga Mutant, if I had Ayla, would probably have been Ice 2 or Shock, maybe. And yeah, that's that makes for a very painful mutant fight. So I was hoping I would see Ooh. some other mage. Future trying to save at the run here. Trying to save this Zeal 2 fight. And there it goes. Robo's taking a nap, but everyone else putting in that hard work. Thank you so much uh, for coming on today and doing the interview with us. And uh, I can't wait to see more races from you because those skips, you took no time. Uh, there were two in particular. Bat skip took you no time to set up and you just aced it first try. And then the skip in the room, I don't know what it's called, with the black snakes running across the room. You got oh, into the, the chest, uh... out and through the door without an encounter. And that's just incredible. Oh, they are ruminators, yeah. I've been practicing a lot of those Black Omen skips. Um, I'm trying to get more consistent with them because sometimes yeah, I... It was, I, it was yeah, flawless. I, yeah, I fail the bat skip sometimes. Um, and sometimes I fail that ruminator skip too. So I'm trying to keep practicing on those skips. Yeah, well, congratulations on your time. and uh, Oh, thank you. I hope we can... Maybe we'll race some Lost Worlds in the future because... We need more people. Uh, yeah, in we Lost do. Worlds. And uh, Future, yeah. yeah, has beat Zeal 2 with a 131, which is 10 minutes uh, difference. Amazing. Both runners had an amazing run. Uh, Future specifically can't do a uh, interview because. Uh, uh, actually, he just uh, has messaged me well, and he's uh, going to come in. Future now. is, well, future is, is uh, now actually... in the chat, so. Thank you so much for joining us, Chaco, and I can't wait you, to see Chaco. more runs from you. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. You guys take care. Can we you get a nice. runner chat command in the chat, guys? All right, Future, how do you feel? Like that was a PB. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> That'd be a PB for, for a lot of people. Congratulations on an, an amazing time. Thank you. Obviously, a little bit sad to not have been, you know, about eight minutes faster, but it is what it is. Um, both of you basically had flawless runs. To be, to be totally honest, uh, I was looking for mistakes. Um, and you know, no one died. You all had good, good runs. So. Uh, Cthulhu, I, what's a question we can ask? Oh, I I mean, there are several. Um, I was surprised. I think the, the thing I was most surprised about in your run uh, was that you, you both took this route uh, as soon as you had go mode and you finished Mountain of Woe. Um, I believe it was right after Mountain of Woe. You both went and... Um, picked up speed tabs, did some shopping and things in Zeal, and I was a little surprised to see you do that because, I, I I don't know, from most of the runs I've watched with you, you are pretty focused on speed. And so, um, or not, I wasn't sure, was there a part of you that almost didn't go check those things? Um, I wasn't happy with my setup. I wasn't happy with my levels. I don't think I ever found a better weapon for Frog until the treasure room in the Black Omen, so... Yeah. And then what made you choose Frog over uh, Marley? Looking at that party and thinking, please God, no, don't make me do this. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, uh, no. Wouldn't have been a terrible party, but three healers in one party wasn't ideal for me. At least with Frog, I had 
decent damage potential. Then I found the Valkyrie and I spent a few minutes off my mic, thankfully, swearing at myself, but you know. <laughs> that was sure. the big difference uh, between both teams here was uh, Traco swapped Frog for Marl. However, um, you both had a different early game check. Uh, you went to Proto and he went to Dactyl. And you both stuck with your first three. So for okay. that, you know, no one can blame you. Um, I was wondering myself, maybe when he got Valkyrie, maybe he would swap Marl in, but that eh, didn't happen. Um, why is it that you, I mean, you both had such good management during your boss fights. You both had great healing and attacks. No one, like, no one really struggled, but what gave frog the edge over marl say because i'm assuming that's what the swap would be for either runner yeah you think? frog frog for me had the edge because i was hoping he'd learn heal it didn't happen in the end i think i was only a few ap shorts but heal would have been the big difference for me because that would have been yes. a massive heal yeah but in the end, it didn't matter because Robo and Magus were doing the damage and whoever was left was a healing bot anyway. It just happens to be an item healing bot this time. The other thing I noticed that I thought was really interesting um, is when you were doing Death, uh, Death's Peak, you hit an encounter against... Oh, I forget what those enemies are called. What did you call them earlier, Procky? Uh, oh, the, the crack. The, the, yeah. So you, I think you accidentally hit one of those, but then it dropped a Lapis. And so then it seems so like I, you I, I, you decided to annihilate all of their species. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of fights where I saw shinies and decided on the genocide route. Yeah, I don't blame you there, because I, I even said during the run, I, I would have done the same thing as soon as I saw a lapis drop. And, uh, I mean, those lapises were useful, so... Vindicated. Very useful. Uh... I think another question that's popular tonight is when you saw the prism specs oh. and couldn't afford them, what yeah. what went through your mind? That's life. <laughs> we all Look. kind of sat in sadness together, holding hands as we watched <laughs> both of you find prism specs, hesitate for a couple seconds before realizing I can't afford these. I mean, at this point, I've done quite a few Lost World runs, because obviously I've been practicing for tonight. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten this time. Um, I'm used to the fact that you're poor in this run. I mean, I've gotten lucky in some practice runs. You get occasionally, you know, grindable fights with amulets or elemental mail. But yeah, I, I didn't find a good source of money this time. Yeah, it, it's a, one of the big, big struggles in Lost Worlds. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on and answering a few questions for us. And I think we are going to wrap things up tonight, but don't forget about the other events on Randomania all throughout the week. And as well as our weekly Sunday race will continue next weekend. Uh, and there will be more information about that, but hope to see you guys there. And uh, who knows who will be running? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Cthulhu, Future, Corinth, uh, Chaco, everyone who was involved, and the whole chat. What yeah, a great give night. some give some emote spam for for Procky here, because uh, I think th was this your first com today? Maybe for random. Event? Okay. Yeah, for this. Uh, Wait, you were super yeah. nice to have around, because I like I said at the start of this, uh, I I kind of think of you as the lost world guy i think you have a lot of knowledge so it's super helpful to have you around for it try to uh, provide as much as i can so looking so. forward to future events absolutely but thank you guys for checking it out and we will see you next time good night